<laughs> what are you laughing at? Shorty. Oh, him going, oh. Yeah. As soon as you hit record. He's, he's just an attention whore. Do you know what it is? I have those crates sitting on uh, the futon where I'm trying to reorganize this room. He and he wants to be, to be in, in here, here with us. us. But also, if he's in here with us, he will still cry. Yeah. So, he just wants to cry. All Eyes on Me. That's the new single coming out by Shorty McShort Stuff. Um, he's not afraid of any legal things that could come his way because he copied Tupac. It's been a while since we've reacted to Casual Geographic, but it seems like he keeps popping out these videos that are wholesome videos. What's oh. wrong with this man? Oh, I'm ready. Because starting? people want wholesome. People want wholesome. There's enough bad. There's enough stupid, yeah. you know, crap going on out there that's all mean and bad. Why not have some wholesome yeah. shit? Wholesome animals? Why I'm not? ready. Like, like, why do people feel like they have to fucking go around and cuss all the time and all that stupid shit and just be mean and vulgar? Let's get some wholesome stuff in here. This is Casual Geographics. How do wild animals have fun? Question mark. Warning. Wholesome. I'm here for right. it. I'm excited about it. Let's do it. Okay, I pull up. How about at the after party? You and all your friends. Is that Kevin I think so. Hi. Good morning. I love yeah. otters. Even though they're kind of annoying as well. No, no, I'm so Wow. <laughs> Feeling that ice awesome Everybody map. has a different playing style. <laughs> Fun. F is for friends who do stuff together. U is for you and me. N is for anywhere at any time at all. And I appreciate how that song spells out fire and not fun. And we all just collectively accepted that. <laughs> But fun isn't just a human construct that man, or a talking sponge, invented. Nah, plenty of animals have ways of having a good time. Take wolves for example. Wolves are social animals, so it makes sense that they'd use play to strengthen bonds in the pack. Wolves in the wild will do things like play tug of war, or try to get others to chase them. And it's not just the pups doing it, the adults get in on it too. They even have a specific way of inviting others to play. A play bow is like the wolf version of a friend request, and it's a signal that they want others to get in on the games. And if you don't believe me, play bow in front of your dog and watch how fast you get his undivided attention. Because dogs are all about play. It's why stronger dogs will actively hold back and restrain themselves just to keep their playmate engaged in the games going. It's called self-handicapping, and you'll often see it with male puppies letting physically weaker female puppies win. They know what they're doing. They know, and if you've ever had a girlfriend, you do too. I'll tell you what, coyotes sure do. But adult wolves rarely self-handicap because they rarely nerf themselves on purpose. But I'll tell you one thing dogs did get from wolves, fetch. That's right, we didn't come up with that. What? In an experiment in Stockholm University in Sweden, researchers hand raised a litter of puppies, making sure to get them comfortable with their presence, but not playing with them. And at eight weeks old, they brought in a person the wolf pups had never seen before to administer a series of tests. One of those tests involved tossing a tennis ball, and to the shock of the scientists, some of the wolf pups actually retrieved the ball and returned it to them. Remember, we're talking about wolves here. Wolves that hadn't been trained or motivated to do that, they basically just freestyled the game of fetch. Not all the wolf pups did this, but understanding human cues was thought to be a domestic dog thing, so realistically none of them should have. We didn't teach dogs fetch, it was already programmed into their software. Son of but if bitch. we didn't teach them, who did? Well. Maybe ravens, because we've already talked about the wolf-raven relationship. What? But ravens have been seen seemingly playing with specific puppies in the pack. They'll get play tug of war with sticks. The ravens will do things like tease them to get the wolf pups to chase after them. And sometimes the ravens will even fly over them with sticks to get them to jump. These childhood games are probably how ravens and wolves can form legitimate emotional bonds. And it actually makes a lot of sense that this kind of thing would happen, since wolves are social pack animals and ravens are one of the most playful things with wings while also having the intelligence of a small child. Because you're gonna see, the smarter an animal is, the more playful they usually are. And that's because play typically comes down to two things, manipulating the objects around you and interacting with others. Two things that do require intelligence. Like take bees, probably the most intelligent new social insect wow. out there. Well, in an experiment in the Queen Mary University in London, scientists built a setup where bees had a choice. Take a path leading directly to food, or explore a path with an obstacle course of tiny wooden balls. And to add to that, one side had wooden balls that were fixed in place, while the others were loose and could be rolled around. Not only did every bee choose the ball path, every single one tried rolling a ball at least once. Some of the bees even went right back after eventually stopping for food. And to make it even more interesting, it was actually the juvenile bees that spent the most time ball rolling. 
So yeah, that's actually how we found out bees can play. But the question is, what other insects can? Well, we can probably rule out ants, and here's why. It's not because they're not smart enough to goof off and play games. It's because they probably get murked by the queen before they have enough time to figure it out. Because an ant colony runs like an efficient engine, and any part not doing their part gets wow. turned into past yeah. tense. And queen ants are crazy cutthroat, like to the point where they'll actively sabotage their own colony just to keep themselves higher in power. The trade-off is, the ant colony is a militia that's capable of cutting down animals hundreds of times their size. And in a game like the ants underground kingdom, you get to personally oh, watch ant colony goes. overwhelm threats like mantises, eviscerate spiders, ant. and even flex on lizards. Wow. And this is just a game mechanic, there are actual ants out there that'll go out of their way to meal prep spiders. And lizards in South America had to literally evolve to avoid getting packed up by a swarm of fire ants. Ugh. True story. And in the ants underground kingdom, you get to add to your insect infantry by hatching no. and raising that them, looks including cute. a class Hell of special no. ants with special abilities. But it's not all war all the time, you also get to explore and design ant nests for your ant colony to live Fuck in. And you know, it's really? graphics like that that won this game the best game changer of 2021 by Google Play. Also, the ants underground kingdom will be releasing a new version December 16th, along with epic new heroes <laughs> I can't tell you more about because I don't even know who they are yet. But I can tell you about the special redeem code they have for you all. If you use the redeem code the ants xmas, you'll get 50 eggs which you can use to get purple special ants and other cool ant swag. So to play the world's first ant strategy mobile game, make sure to download the ants underground kingdom using the link in the description. But just because you can play one game about ants, doesn't mean ants are the ones to play games. But corvids like crows and ravens definitely are, and it goes way beyond weaponizing wolves. Cause as cute as this may be, and it really is, you could argue that keeping wolves close is in their best interest. But then there's this, a raven using a plastic I've lid as a sled this. to slide down snowy hills. And then you have this raven sliding down the roof of a public library. Or at least trying to. And they have nothing to gain from doing this. This is unrewarded play, and basically it means, yeah, they're not doing it for survival or anything, nah, they're just doing it to have a good time. Yeah, I wasn't kidding, for a bird whose group name is an unkindness, ravens and really corvids in general are probably the most playful birds on the planet. It's why you'll see them actively mess with other animals just for the memes, <laughs> even if it means instigating a literal catfight for their own entertainment. So next time you're wondering how animals have fun, I want you to remember this snowboarding crow. Or you can think of this self-tobogganing otter. River otters in Yellowstone have been seen getting a running start and snow surfing down icy slopes. Oh, now, at first, science has just figured that. it was their way of getting around. That theory fell apart yeah. when they watched the river otters run back up the slope like, like kids at a water park, only to we slide back down. And that goes back to Being unrewarded dead? play because the otters don't gain anything but a good time. And FOMO for otters is a real thing because you're more likely to see them sliding as a group than just solo. And like ravens, you can almost see how intelligence and playfulness almost goes hand in hand. Especially since otters are considered to be the most intelligent of all mustelids, oh, being part oh of the special God. class of animals that are able to use tools. To the point where river otters will seem to juggle rocks when they get excited. No, like, seriously, <laughs> we, we had no idea why they were doing this until researchers at a zoo noticed they started juggling rocks more when it got closer to their feeding time. We still don't know exactly what it is about food that makes otters start juggling rocks, but sometimes you need to just take a moment to stop asking why just to enjoy what's in front of you. Yeah. Like, why do crocodiles like the color pink? Because according to anecdotal observations, crocodilians seem to have a pink preference, favoring tossing around small objects that look like the result of a red-white affair. It's why the prehistoric predator that's been terrorizing the planet for hundreds of millions of years can be seen picking pink flowers with its jaws. Crocs apparently have other ways of having fun. They'll take turns going down natural water slides and swim right back up and do it again. They'll give each other piggyback rides, just cuz. And there's even a story where animal behavior expert Vladimir Diné claimed to witness an alligator seemingly play with a group of river otters in Big Cypress in Florida because Florida. You know, I'm not even kidding. He has a whole paper on play behavior in crocodilians, and he talks about watching river otters regularly visit one specific gator and mess with him by getting close to him, nipping at his tail, and even splashing water on his head. Oh my Most God. gators would respond to this by just submerging, but this one gator played along by lunging at the otters. I know what you're probably thinking, and to that, I give you this. At one point, one of the otters slipped down the bank and was immediately grabbed by the gator. But instead of making an example out of it, the prehistoric merc machine just released it perfectly unharmed. It was like a game that both of them were in on. And unlike wolves and ravens, gators and otters have legitimate beef in some parts. But like I said, sometimes you need to forget about the why what? and just enjoy the what. And what happened was, these games went on for a couple days until the marsh eventually dried up and the alligators and otters both moved on. That's not the only example of crocodilians at play, that just happens to be the best one I got. Damn. Another time was when a gator found a football in his swamp and instead of easily popping it, it seemed to toy with it by grabbing it with his jaws and tossing it around. 
You know I could 100% use this to make a Florida Gators joke, but at this point I think it would be low hanging fruit. Oh. But crocodiles and alligators being playful goes right in line with the intelligence point I made earlier. Despite having a brain in the weight class of a walnut, crocodilians are much more intelligent than they get credit for. Unlike dolphins, who get all of the credit for it. Now you probably know dolphins like to have fun. The problem is, most of their pastimes would probably get this video age restricted with the quickness. Like for example, when two Amazon River dolphins were seen playing with a Benny Anaconda. I put playing in quotes because both dolphins were visibly aroused, and the snake ended up flatlining, likely to drowning. And, and you know, knowing what I know about dolphins, that's probably what got them excited. Because most dolphin fun comes at someone's expense. I can repeat that same sentence without the fun, and it'd still be accurate. I give you exhibit A. But dolphins can have fun oh. in safer work ways too. Yeah. They'll take turns chasing each other in games that can last hours. They'll find random objects to carry around and even play <laughs> catch with. Oh, and a little fun fact for you. One of a dolphin's favorite things to play with includes sargassum seaweed. Researchers actually watched dolphins in the Bahamas play a kind of keep away game with the seaweed. But the best part was the dolphins were used to being around humans and eventually they invited the researchers to play with them. And no amount of scientific integrity would stop any of us from saying no. Dolphins have also been seen surfing the bow waves produced by ships sometimes for miles on end. It's not like they just do it to save energy. A group of spinner dolphins actually memorized the path scientists on a boat would take. So every morning the spinner dolphins would show up and ride the bow wave as the scientists traveled to their site. The dolphins would leave for a bit but then return and do the exact same thing when the scientists started Damn. heading back. So yeah, it's really no surprise that the smartest thing in the ocean can be as playful as a child because honestly, they're probably as smart as one. So smart that many believe that dolphins will purposely seek out puffer fish just to get them elevated. Apparently the tetrodotoxin that can discharge you from the population in minutes has something of a narcotic effect in small doses. To the point where people will swear by seeing dolphins take turns passing the puffer until they're all stuck on its product. And if dolphins were humans, they'd definitely be the ones huffing markers in class. By the way, oh you my uh, God. really shouldn't do that. But dolphins are far from the only ones that get elevated and hella faded. It's believed that cats will eat grass and leaves because they contain folic acid which helps move oxygen around the blood. Plus when they throw it up, it helps clean out their system. So it shouldn't be a surprise to see the biggest cat in America chewing on leaves. What's surprising is that it seems to put the jaguar in a trance and even induces kitten-like behavior. Like to the point where people believe that this apex predator will go out of its way to chew on leaves from the Yaji. And in doing so, they book a flight on the same plane as Joe Rogan. Scientists can't <laughs> say for sure just why jaguars will go to these lengths to get zooted. Many natives will tell you that jaguars do it to buff their perception and senses, which heightens their hunting abilities. We don't know if the plants even affect them like that, but let's be real. We all know that look. That boy is gone. If your child ever came home looking like this, you'd definitely give them a talking to. So it's in my non-professional opinion that jaguars will purposely get off one when they're not busy hunting for a living. Cause when nothing in the jungle can press you, you can afford to. Not the case for pandas though, they gotta take licks from everybody. That doesn't stop them from being a walking viral they're clip so every time cute. they're on camera. But there's actually a reason why you can make an entire playlist on pandas being cute. Mother pandas usually only raise one baby at a time. If she pops out twins then it's all good for Mary Kay, but it might be up for Ashley. For most of a young panda's life, its only playmate is its mother. So when keepers hand raise baby pandas and the baby pandas imprint on them, this is what happens because this is what they do with their actual mothers. Another thing pandas like to go viral for is their very much one-sided beef with gravity in the form of falling out of trees. But like I said, a lot of animals can pack up pandas, especially when they're young, so their only option is to climb, oh. which very much makes trees their safe haven. They climb to avoid predators. They climb to avoid other pandas. They'll even sometimes go through the process of making another panda in the trees. Trees are so important that young pandas instinctively love climbing. So much that many believe that the reason pandas like to hug their caretaker's legs is because they see human legs as trees and honestly can't help themselves. And while this might be fun for them, this is actually a form of rewarded play since climbing ends up being a massive part of their life. But so does rolling around and there might be a reason for that too. <laughs> First of all, panda bones are weirdly thick and heavy for their size, so the falls and tumbles they take don't hurt them nearly as much as you'd expect oh. them to. Also, pandas are nearsighted, so it's possible they legitimately can't see what's in front of their faces. But many scientists believe pandas just enjoy rolling around, like to wow. the point where mothers will often join their cubs doing it. They're not the only bears that can be playful. Polar bears can actually be just as goofy, it's just that pandas are a lot less likely to John Wick a human for food. Polar bears can form friendships where they eat, travel, and play together, and these relationships can last years. Their favorite way to bond is by wrestling, and like with dogs, a stronger polar bear will often self-handicap and let the smaller bear win. And also like with dogs, polar bears have their own way of asking for permission to play too. In their case, a polar bear will move its head from side to side to initiate a friendly sparring session. These pair bonds usually last a summer until they eventually go their separate ways for the harsh winter season. But time and 
time again, scientists have seen the same polar bear friends reuniting after breeding season and carrying on like nothing ever happened. Wow. And honestly, I feel like most adult friendships go just like that. Yeah. As in, you can go months without speaking or hearing from each other, but you can also link up and go on like they never left. But of for course, sure. polar bears know how to have fun by themselves too. Polar bears have been seen sliding down hills or across ice for hours for no reason other than having fun. So basically, even the biggest land predators on the planet know how to have a good time. But what about the biggest land animal, period? Well, it turns out, having fun is actually an important part of an elephant's life, and males and females are different in how they do it. Young males love roughhousing and play fighting, which actually helps prepare them for a future of running fades for female validation. This natural playful aggression is why you'll often see young male calves chasing around other animals. Hold on, wait for it. And there it is. That's what it looks like for a baby elephant to throw a tantrum. Fun for young females usually involves thrashing around vegetation, sticks, bones, and anything else they can wrap their trunks around. But the ultimate sign of elephant fun is something they do called the floppy run. And it's exactly what it sounds like. When elephants really get excited, they'll shake their heads from side to side, they'll let their trunks hang loose and their ears flap in the wind, and they'll just run. All while trumpeting. <laughs> It's usually calves and young teenagers that get floppy with it, but sometimes the whole herd gets involved. Aww. But considering half an elephant's time is spent in the water, then it makes sense that half their fun happens in there too. And if you've ever seen elephants playing in the water, <laughs> it's actually wild how much they look like kids in a pool. There's something really satisfying about watching a 12,000 pound bipex splashing around in water like a child. And often they'll spray oh. water at each other or sometimes even other animals just for the sport of it. And in this case, other animals can very much include humans. But all this lighthearted fun might actually be crucial to their survival. You see, some studies say that the most playful elephant calves grow up to be the ones best at coping with environmental stress, which increases their chances of survival. Again, we don't know if this is 100% true, but like I said, sometimes you need to just forget about why and just enjoy watching a baby elephant take a shower. Yeah. But that's going to do it for this video. I want to thank you all so much for the support this wow. year. It really does mean a lot. And best believe, I got a lot more stuff planned for 2023. But for now, happy holidays, stay safe out there, and I'll see you all in the next one. Yay! Yay! What a good video. That was so cute. The Maybe little about to otter. Cry. No. Mickey's about to cry. The little otters with their rocks and then the elephants were my favorite. Um, for me, I think it was the whole idea that playing fetch is a natural instinct of dogs. That is crazy and possibly so because cool. of ravens. But I've met so, so cool. many dogs that are just like, wow, fetch. Jordy won't fetch. Uh, he does to a certain extent. He he will go get the things yeah, that you throw, he and he'll bring them to you he won't in an go, attempt to make yeah, you yeah, want yeah. to get them, and then he'll. I like, guess no. just he wants to play more. Yeah. yeah. We got Dr. Dell, Rappy, Multi Pokey Cool, who also does the Joining Me Today podcast. Nice. Um, Jake and Anopolis was here earlier, and a whole righteous crew of rowdy individuals here hanging out with us while we're watching sure. this um i'd love to play with a baby hippo jake said oh me too I don't know the, about ba that. the babies they can't uh, they do can still latch on your arm i bet dude if i died by a baby hippo i deserve hey, death don't uh don't go out there asking for shit if i like humanely could meet and just play with a baby hippo, a no. little baby elephant, and I'm, I'm sure there are others. I would just, I'm, I'm good. My Dude, life is complete. What video was it that we were watching where this guy was like, uh, oh, I have a tame crocodile and it, or alligator, and I it was it just like been a casual swimming with the kids and stuff. And oh, like, no, yeah. Um, no, that was one of my TikTok videos. No, bro. This dude had an alligator with no, there was nothing keeping it from biting anybody. It was and just it was just swimming in a alligator. pool with these children. And That was too far. And I was just so uncomfortable. Like, if, if you want to have a baby alligator for whatever reason, maybe you're like helping it, maybe it can't be in the wild, like whatever those whatever circumstances. Reason. That's, you know, whatever. Good on you, yeah. But bringing little babies to swim uh, with it. Yeah, in the water where it Not hunts. little babies, but like one, like, and the little girl was like this. And I was like, one snap and she's out. Less than a second. You don't have, I mean, there's nothing no you can do about it. What was it? I, I feel like it wasn't an alligator. There's another old man, probably in Florida, and he and his wife have this animal. Um, 
some kind of like monitor lizard mm. and it's huge and it's like a big baby yeah. like it like sits with him and watches tv and oh, like yeah, he it's rubs like its belly and warm, like you know I, i'm sure that there are plenty of reptiles that are extremely large that are fine for people to be around but leave the kids out of it right don't put children in the fucking water with a crocodile or an alligator be realistic about this shit, but they're like, I, but he's sweet. I don't give a shit. I don't know, man. Yeah, for I now. don't know, man. But anyway, this video, anyway, beautiful baby, video, baby hippo. Oh, totally, baby hippo near his mama. mama, mama. I would love to have a raven that would like fetch and people irritate have, people shorty. Have and, ravens. And I'd love to have one. There's a whole... See, you don't really TikTok like I do. No, I don't you, even have the don't, app on my phone right you now. You don't, don't really think. like... I don't understand. Uh -uh. But anyway, there are people who, like, in their backyards will, like, befriend ravens. And, like, they'll leave them food. And, I mean, it takes a really long time. But once they, like, trust them, they'll bring them back, like, coins and, like, little hair pieces. Like, anything that's, like, shiny and they think... I yeah. guess is a value or yeah. it looks cool. I this don't, I don't know. Yeah. yeah, they like bring it back to them in the same place. I would love that. <laughs> Do you just have a gang of a reminder yeah, of ravens like, that go out and steal shit your... for you? No. <laughs> just like have your Nikki. morning coffee and then you go out and you like you can maybe even talk to Are it. you a super villain and we just didn't know it this entire time? No. Find out on the next episode <laughs> of they call me hat guy and gnarly nikki react yeah we are incredibly grateful for casual geographic aka hood nature and if you do not follow him on all of his social media platforms and media creation Especially platforms Instagram. then what are you doing you should go check this young man out um he's wonderful he puts out fantastic videos and i think that he has blown up for a reason yeah. because he does really so really good stuff him. so support him embrace him love him he's the man you can do the same for us if you wanted to be like hey uh gnarly nikki cat guy you guys are cool you could subscribe to this channel put recommendations down in the comments you could even subscribe to gnarly nikki's channel oh which will gosh. be linked in the title of this video yeah. if you want to um but you could also join our discord our patreon our twitch we got all kinds of stuff going on and where could you find these places to follow us and to put in recommendations for videos all of the links to that will be down in the description we also go live every monday and thursday at 6 30 p.m eastern standard time on twitch and youtube currently where we do crafts and baking and have fun and play games and not not reactions. When can the reactions, reactions? You can watch if you follow us on Twitch. Right now, we're working on figuring out our schedule for how we're going to do reactions. So we'll be live streaming probably three times a week because we were doing them on Thursdays, but doing two live streams in one day turned out to be a clusterfuck, and it wasn't doing anybody any favors. So we're going to move yeah. that around. We'll let you know in the future exactly. But you can follow when us that, on Twitch, right? Because then you'll get a notification, and it'll let you know when we go live. Yeah. Um, shout out to all of our people. We really appreciate everybody in the chat. Dr. Dell, Gwen, Jake, Rappy, Multi Pokey Cool, and of course, Nanopolis. Thank you guys so much for watching this video, and we'll see you in the see next you guys. one.